for joining us here at Cooking with Caldwell. Today is all about custard work. Love custards, there's a lot of different things we can do. And today's technique is gonna be creme anglaise. And I'm gonna show you three different ways to use creme anglaise to prepare three different dishes. First off, we need to cook it. So we're gonna start out with some egg yolk, sugar in a bowl. Then, I have my cream, milk, and vanilla beans right here that we're going to temper in. Okay. What I'm going to do is going to put these egg yolks on top of my pot. We're going to temper in slowly. Now tempering is slowly bringing the eggs up to the same temperature as the cream. Okay, so do this as a slow drizzle. Love custards. Technically, this is called a stirred custard. So we're actually cooking this on the double boiler, okay? One thing, or a few things about double boilers. Double boilers need to stay on low, okay? You need to make sure the water in the pot does not touch the bottom of the bowl, okay? That'll scorch whatever you're trying to cook. Whether you're melting chocolate or you're cooking an egg, uh, dish, it's going to scramble your eggs too quick, okay? So that's two big points about double boilers. So I have about an inch of water in the pot, set the bowl on top. That bowl is going to trap the steam and keep the heat in, right? So we can actually turn the heat down so I don't burn my hand, or if I'm using a towel, it doesn't catch fire, okay? And what we're going to do is we're just going to keep the eggs moving, okay? We're just going to keep them moving. I'm going to finish adding the rest of our dairy. So essentially a custard is a mixture of egg and dairy, usually egg yolk. Okay, you can have whole eggs. That'll be considered a royale, which is a different type of custard. But we're making creme anglaise, so this is straight egg yolk, sugar, vanilla, milk, and cream. All of our dairies in the bowl. Make sure you scrape your sides down often. And at the beginning of the show, I told you we would make three different dishes. First dish would be a creme brulee. Creme brulee. Now, many chefs in the pastry world consider this a mother sauce. And what do we mean by mother sauce? Mother sauce means that we can derive different dishes or sauces from this one application, okay? So in the savory world, we have mother sauces too. Demi gloss, hollandaise sauce. There's a lot of different mother sauces. Well, in the pastry world, they consider this a mother sauce because we can derive different dishes from this one application. Okay, our eggs are tempered, our dairy mixture is in. We used a whole vanilla bean in that dairy mixture. There is a little foam on top. When we're making creme brulees, we want to try to get no foam or as little as possible. If you do it's okay, it will come off. All right, so let me bring my dishes to the bowl. So this recipe will actually make around six to eight creme brulees, but I'm using this one recipe to show different applications. So we're just going to use two. Make sure you have your oven preheated at 325. If you've ever had a creme brulee, they're very, very rich, very tasty. Okay, these are going to go in the oven at 325 degrees. Now, notice I put them in a pan, okay? You can use a casserole, a casserole dish or a pan like I have. 
you need to make sure you put those creme brulee dishes in a water bath, okay? That allows the inside of that custard to set before the outside gets cooked fully, okay? So make sure you do that as well. All right, now that our creme brulees are in, we're gonna move on to the second applica uh, application, which is French vanilla ice cream. So we're gonna put our mixture back on the double boiler. And we're gonna finish cooking our eggs, okay? So, we're cooking our eggs two different ways. This is a stirred custard, so we're gonna finish the cooking process on top of the double boiler. Eggs coagulate around 170 degrees. They finish coagulating around 175 to 180. So that's what we want to bring this temperature up to. Second way we're cooking our eggs is in a water bath, okay? That's called a baked custard. This is a stirred custard. They also have steamed custards as well. So essentially what you want to do is just keep it moving. Keep it moving. That way the eggs do not curdle and start to overcook. This will thicken. It'll get to a consistency that we call nappe, which coats the back of a spoon. And that's what we're looking for. All this foam's gonna dissipate, it's gonna disappear. You're gonna be left with a nice, smooth, velvety sauce. Try not to over whip. If you over whip, you're going to incorporate too much air. And it's not going to give you a good idea of how close your eggs are to cooking. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but you can see the steam start to wisp up. It means our eggs are getting nice and hot. We're getting close to 150 degrees. But again, we need to be at 170 to 180. Now this will make a very, very rich ice cream, okay? There is a ratio that I use to kind of uh, cut that richness, and that would be one part milk to three parts creme anglaise will help thin it out, okay? And you wouldn't incorporate that until after you cook your eggs, okay? As you can see, we're getting a lot thicker See all my foams dissipated off the top, and that foam came from over whipping, right? So as you whip, as you whip, as you whip, it's cutting air into whatever you're making, whether it's whipped cream or the dish we're making today. But as those eggs cook, that foam will dissipate and leave. And that lets you know that your eggs are starting to get cooked and you're getting close to 170 degrees. So you can see how thick it's getting. Another great thing I love about this, and another reason why they call it a mother sauce, is your dairy is your vehicle for flavor, right? It's a great medium to incorporate flavor into any of these dishes. Um, so at the restaurant, I do an apple butter creme brulee. So we infuse the cream with house-made apple butter, right? develops that flavor, and then we use that cream to temper in our eggs. I used to do a cappuccino creme brulee. We would do it the same way, right? We would infuse the dairy with the coffee and the cinnamon and use that to make our custard out of. Same thing with ice cream. Same thing. Now you can see all the steam coming off off these eggs. It means we're getting very, very close. All right, we're gonna take it off. You can see how thick we are. I have no egg that's curdled around my bowl. There's nothing dried around my bowl. You wanna make sure you scrape every so often so you don't have overcooked egg on the side of your bowl. That's gonna show great technique, okay? 
Now we're going to cool it in an ice bath. This is actually going to shock the creme anglaise. It's going to slow down the cooking process and it's going to cool it down so we can use it in our ice cream maker. So now we can actually let it rest. We're going to check our creme brulees. They usually take 15 to 20 minutes depending on how thick or thin you make them, right? Or how big the vessel is, okay? So we'll go ahead and check those. All right, they're looking good. Creme brulees, as I said, are custard. So when you're cooking them, they're actually going to have a little bit of give in the middle. They're going to have a little jiggle. So they need to be cooked until it's just set. You want to have a little bit of jiggle in the middle because there's a thing called carryover cooking, right? So once you pull something out of the oven, off the grill, it's going to keep cooking, right? You're not going to shock the cooking process right off the bat, so you got to allow for carryover cooking. If there's a slight jiggle in the middle, it's going to carry over as it's resting and finish setting up, okay? So this is what our creme brulee should look like once they come out. Okay, we're going to take them out of the pan. Let these cool in the refrigerator. Okay, they need to be served cold, not warm. Okay, you can see the beautiful vanilla bean, right? It's not burnt, there's no color on top, and there's no foam, right? Remember we had quite a bit of foam. The foam was cooked off. That foam will settle on top and bake on top of your creme brulee. So that's one reason why you want to make sure that foam's not on there. Let's go ahead and burn these creme brulees off. Let's check our creme anglaise one more time. All right, the creme anglaise is actually getting cooled down. So we'll go ahead and add it to our ice cream maker. Now you can use this recipe for any ice cream maker, any standard ice cream maker, okay, even, even the hand crank, it will work, okay. Let's wipe the bottom of the bowl so we don't get water in there. Beautiful. Okay, I reserved some for my third application. Set our timer, freeze. About 15 minutes we should have great ice cream. Okay, while our ice cream is churning, we'll go ahead and burn off our creme brulee. Okay. I love, love, love using turbinado sugar for creme brulees, right? So creme stands for the custard, and brulee literally translate to burn, right? So we're going to burn the top. I love using turbinado sugar or sugar in the raw, okay? You can see it's a larger crystal. It has a higher caramelization point, so it tends not to burn as easy as regular granulated sugar. And I'll tell you another reason why, too, after we actually put it on our creme brulees here. So with regular granulated sugar, you will tend to get piles of sugar everywhere, right? One thing I like about turbinado is you get one even layer all the way across that creme brulee, right? So it burns nice and even. You have a nice hard crack all the way through. Terminado sugar might be a touch more expensive, but it brings a it makes a better product in the end. See a nice even layer of sugar on there. Okay, take your torch. I like working from the outside in. So 
So you actually want to melt the sugar first. Once you get it melted, then you can caramelize it, right? Sugar caramelizes around 320, 330 degrees. All right, start from the outside, work your way in. Also want to make sure you don't have any sugar on the rim of the glass. And that right there is how you burn a creme brulee. All right. So that recipe should make about six of these if you were to make creme brulees with the whole recipe. All right. Notice I reserved some of this creme anglaise from the uh, ice cream maker because we use it as a sauce too. Right. So if, if you have a beautiful chocolate cake or chocolate tort um, or anything that you would like a nice sauce to accompany for a dessert, Perfect, perfect, perfect addition. Okay, it makes a nice trifle as well, right? Beautiful dish for the summer, very, very easy. Layered cake, fruit, whipped cream, creme anglaise, can't go wrong, right? So I actually have a chocolate cupcake here that our baking students made earlier this week. What we're gonna do is just do a nice garnish. You can see how nice and thick this sauce got. It's beautiful, okay? Do it right over top. Have it coming off the side. Strawberry coolie. Fresh strawberries on there. Nice plate white. There you go. So you can use it for a sauce. A creme brulee. And A beautiful French vanilla ice cream. Now the reason that this is French vanilla and not regular vanilla is the eggs, the egg yolk. So if you've noticed anytime you've ever bought French vanilla it's got the yellow tint to it, right? That's coming from the egg yolk and the creme anglaise, right? So that's the main difference between French vanilla and a regular vanilla bean ice cream you would see in the store or at a creamery, right? So again, this is what we call creme anglaise. In the pastry world, we consider it a mother sauce. Technically, it's a stirred custard, and there's a variety of dishes that you can make with it. Um, one other dish that is not shown here is called a Bavarian cream. Okay, we could take creme anglaise, some gelatin, set it in a mold, and that would be considered a Bavarian cream. So you might have had a Bavarian cream at a restaurant or somewhere before. That's exactly how you make it. Okay, so thanks for joining us here at Caldwell Community College, and I hope to see you again.